and everybody is good. Um, does everybody hear me? I don't see anybody typing in the, uh, in the thing. I, I see people typing in Discord uh, and GoToBox, guys, also, please, since we're going to be reaching out to the rest of the world. Hi, everybody. Um, nice to see you guys. Let me just get on camera for just one second. I'm going to say hello. Sight and sound is good. All right. Very, very nice. Let me just um, share my webcam with you guys for a minute or two. Okay, let's see if I can get on camera. There we go. All right, sorry, it's it's nighttime in New York and there's like a lot of light and fade. So I'm just gonna say hi to everybody for a sec and then come off the camera because uh, you know we're gonna focus on on charts and tools and other cool stuff and you don't really need to see my face. Um, I'll be narrating the whole thing. Good to see everybody. Where's everybody from? Um, who's up really, really late? Let's see who's a true trading degenerate who's come to hang out with me. Um, Okay, well, Kay is telling me that I should stay on 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 camera. Okay, I'll I'll try to stay on camera. Um, if you guys want me to, I'm no problem with that. Um, okay, so we are live on YouTube. Okay, she's telling me she doesn't want to see people. Don't want to see boring slides. They want to see my lovely face. Uh, we'll see. We'll see about that. You don't know my audience. They love my boring slides. Um, hey guys. Um, okay, so where's everybody? Michigan, Australia. It's uh, what is it? The nine in the morning in Australia. Nice to see you. Unless you're like on the other side of Australia. Hey Miguel, look at this. The uh, the Europeans are out in force. It must be like close to what is it? Close to midnight to you guys. Oh my God. Um, uh, very very nice to see everybody here. Thank you for coming in. We're just gonna give it one more minute. It's like seven oh two. Let's give it to about seven oh three, seven oh four before we roll out because. Um, because I really want to uh, make sure that everybody starts with us. Um, for those of you who are wondering, yes, absolutely, we are going to be uh, recording this. It's actually being recorded right now, and I will be sending uh, the recording to everybody after the webinar, so do not worry. If you miss something, if there are some links that you guys want, I'll put everything into, um, into the email. I'm going to share a couple of little resources with you, not too much, but some kind of useful stuff that I, that I found that I think would be good for you as well as some of the proprietary stuff that we have here at BK that I think you guys will find very, very interesting. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, just one sec. Let me, uh, uh, let me do that, Kay. Let me, let me, let me do that just one second. Okay. Bear with me. I need to, uh, um, I want to see the streaming comments from, from YouTube. Okay. I got to move this over here. Sorry, bear with me a sec. Oh, we lost the uh, thing. Okay, so let me see where are we? Where are my comments? Your activity. Okay, everybody's there. So, uh, I don't want to see the, I'm looking for the YouTube, for the streaming comments. I guess maybe it's, it's in studio. Um, just bear with me a sec, guys. I'm very new to YouTube to live streaming, so I really need to see where the comments are. Where's the stream? Um, yeah, I clicked on that link, and it's um, and it's not it's not taking me to the comments for some reason, Kay. Okay, oh, let me see. Let me see if it's. So he's taking me to the studio. Oh, I see it. I see the comments on the bottom. Sorry, guys. Okay, now I see the comments on the bottom. Hey, guys. Hey, hey YouTube um, followers. Thank you for coming in. I see everybody there. Okay. Uh, oops, sorry. Everybody's seeing my go-to. Uh, let's go to, back to the slide. Okay, just one sec. All right. Um, so it wouldn't be... A webinar with me unless we had sirens, right? Welcome to New York City. So I forget. Please, everybody, forgive me the, uh, for the noises, but that's going to just accompany us. But um, hi, everybody. Who's uh, on YouTube? Where's everybody from? I see Switzerland. I see Ghana. Wow. Pakistan, Australia, all over the world. Nice to see everybody here. Uh, really, really cool. Um, I will cycle through the, um, uh, through the um, what do you call it? comments and questions as we go along. But first, I kind of just want to go through a little bit of the presentation because I did put together some really good um, ideas for you, hopefully. 
And uh, let me just do one other thing because I really want to make sure that I'm seeing the questions from everybody as well. Where are my questions? What happened to my? Uh, There's just too many windows here with uh, with this. I can't find the questions now. Okay, hang on. Oh, okay, they're on the other side. Okay, I'll cycle through the questions this way. No problem. Okay, very cool. All right, good enough. Hi, everybody. Hi, 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 hi. Good to see everybody. Um, okay, I think everybody's in the room. We're ready for a show. Uh, the topic of today's show is uh, hopefully going to be of a lot of interest to everybody. It's what does it take to trade prop, which is a very, very specific type of trading. Um, there's a couple of, I think, unexpected wrinkles in uh, the whole equation that many people may not be familiar with. And what I'm going to do is literally talk to you about just the basic ideas of what you need to do to be able to take a prop evaluation test. I'm actually curious before we even start, um, has anybody ever taken a prop evaluation test or are you interested? Just give me a yes if you've either taken a prop test or interested in, in taking one um, because, um, you know, it's kind of become a huge phenomenon in the retail space, but it's relatively new. It's really only about two, three years old. Um, I wonder how many people have already tried it um, and um, enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it, or, um, you know, hopefully we'll find the presentation useful because I'll give them some really, really good tips on this. So yes is from everybody here. And let's see if there's yeses from everybody on the go-to. Um, let me just switch around to go-to. Oops. Um, huh. So a few yeses. Somebody is interested. Everybody is looking around. I think, you know, listen, um, the key thing with prop that is really, really cool uh, is it's an amazing instrument for freedom, right? You're not trading your own money you are trading real live market prices. You get to practice and you know figure out the best possible strategies. And if you do it well, you actually convert that to real money. Um, and that's a great proposition because you know instead of you taking, just think about the basic uh, economics of prop. A typical retail trader is gonna put $10,000 into his trading account and within two or three months could whittle it down to just a couple of thousand dollars left because you know risk control markets knowledge all sorts of things that make it very difficult initially um same story you could buy a ten thousand dollar or fifty thousand um, dollar prop trading account for nothing and i mean literally nothing these days my you know our partners at apex funding are, are giving it away at 90 percent discount but let's just for argument's sake we do a full face value of a hundred dollars so 10,000 for 100 versus 10,000 for 10,000. You could literally do 100 um, evaluation tests and not pass any of them and still not lose as much money as you would in a single trading account. So uh, that's, I think, one of the primary reasons. But it's also just the fact that, you know, um, it's serious without, without pressuring, right? It's, 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 you trade the markets without having the actual pressure of your own money on the line. I think it's a really great proposition. But there are a couple of very important things you need to know about it. That's why I wanted to put together this webinar and kind of uh, run, you th run you through as what does it take to trade prop? So without much ado, let's kind of start the show. Um, let me see if I can get the uh, slides flipping over here. And let's talk about what I think are just the three fundamental underlying blocks for what you need in order to be able to trade prop. One, you need tools. Two, you need a trading plan. And three, you need a strategy. Today, I hope to answer every one of those questions for you, or at least give you some great ideas within each one of those uh, areas to kind of prepare you fully for um, a good successful attempt at doing prop. Now, when it comes to tools, there's really only three things you need, but they're very important. You can't skimp on any of them. Number one, you need charts. And the default chart software everywhere in the world these days is TradingView. And I'll show you, you know, our versions of TradingView and, um, and everything else. But um, understand that TradingView itself um, can be free. And if you're starting out, maybe you don't want to pay money for it. But almost anybody who is even one one hundredth percent serious really needs to pay uh, for the trading. And by the way, everything I'm going to tell you, I have zero 
economic interest in telling you this stuff. Like I pay the money just like you do. I am just as much of a regular retail trader in this particular arena as everybody else. It's not that, you know, I'm humping for these tools. It's just that these are, I think, are necessary tools to kind of make the experience viable, right? So TradingView has like a, um, like a $15 or $18 or $12, I think $12, I'm not quite sure, but somewhere in that region. Plan, that's more than enough for what you need to do in terms of trading prop, but that's what you really need because the free version is very limiting. It has ads in it. It's really not a serious trading tool for anybody who's serious. There is a great, by the way, tip for everybody who's listening right now. So once a year, TradingView like runs this, this massive Black Friday sale. The, they're actually already starting to advertise it because people really know about it. And it's like literally half off, which is just amazing. I mean, we lock that, lock that deal down every year. So if you're serious, you know, that's what you do. If you want to trade once a month, um, go, go for it. TradingView, I think, is just, you know, a default source. I'm going to show you, um, you know, what the charts look like. And then I'll show you how you can really make TradingView into, into much more than just an analytical platform, but truly a signal generation platform. That's what I'm going to um, show you a little bit later. Um, the second thing, before we get to execution EAs, the second thing you really need is a good information source. And here again, I have no, um, like I'm not humping anything. Uh, uh, I just gonna share with you what I think is the simplest, easiest, most comprehensive website for what retail traders need to have, which is this website called Financial Juice. Again, it has a free component and I have a free, I don't, do not need to pay money for this, but if you want to, it's, you know, it, it gives you, if you pay money for it, you get, it's like a mini Bloomberg. It gives you instant um, data, right? It's not like 10 second delayed. It gives you instant um, headlines from all the markets. You can see the bonds, commodities, crypto, equities, Forex, covers everything. Um, and most importantly, this is what I love. The calendar is right on, right on the page. You come, you come over here, you know, where tomorrow is not on payrolls. You can just simply look and see, hey, what's, you know, what's on the calendar uh, there? And then the moment the data is released, the, the data is actually the, the uh, input is put out here, you know right away what's going on. It also tell you who's gonna be speaking when you have a lot of central banks speak, all that kind of stuff. Very, very useful. You know, tomorrow we have non-farm payrolls. Kathy is actually gonna live trade in our room, uh, which is great. I'm gonna, I always trade these days non-farm payrolls at the open of the New York, of, of the New York open because that's when a lot of the price action happens. But you know, it'll be interesting. The market is looking for a significantly lower uh, number than the one before, right? And what's been the story so far so far, this is a big thing so far, is that the economy has really beaten everybody's expectations for quite a long time. So we'll see what, what happens to the NFPs tomorrow, but that's gonna be a big result. Now, this is the website I think is just meets all the needs in one single web page, right? You don't have to go one place, another place. That's to me, uh, makes it very, very viable uh, and very, very clean. Now, the third thing you need is tools, right? And, um, what I mean by that is execution tools. So I'm going to take this chart. I'm going to I'm going to bring this back here, and I'm going to share with you a couple of things that are proprietary to us. That if you join our service, you're you're going to get this as part of our service. Uh, but whether you join our service or not, these type of tools, in my opinion, are not just nice to have. They're absolutely must have. So. What I mean by execution tools are these very, very simple, very clean, super easy to operate EAs, expert assistants, that do nothing but buy and sell for you with automatic stops and automatic targets. I'm gonna share with you two pieces of software that we have in our room, just to show you, you know, what they do and why it makes a literally a world of difference um, in terms of trading. Because um, the single biggest way, the single easiest way, the single fastest way that everybody loses their evaluation account is because they either refuse to or forget to put a stop on their position. And I don't blame them. I mean, let's take a look at what it takes. I actually, I, I try, I'm, I'm going to go to tiny size because this is actually an account that we trade. So I don't really want to blow up the account on large size here. So we're gonna go 0.01, right? Okay, so let's take a look at what it takes if you're trading MetaTrader 5 and MetaTrader 4 to simply buy an asset like gold, right? I gotta click on 84, I bought it. 
there's no stop, there's no target. Oops, by the way, you see, <laughs> I triggered a trade in, in my room here. I'm gonna, I'm, this is gonna pop up and I'm gonna trigger a few trades because you know um, that's what happens when we trade. But the point being is, now I got Now I have this floating trade, right? Now I gotta go, right click this. You, you can literally time me. It's gonna take me a minute. Modify or delete. Then I gotta put a stop loss. Um, let's say I don't know. Put a stop loss at just one nine eighty and target at um, 1985, just for argument's sake. And I put this over here and you see how long it took me and it's tedious as hell. And then, you know, I got to watch it, right? So that's really not a practical way of trading. Not a practical way of trading. One, because it's, it's all manual. Two, because you're going to forget those stops or you're going to, you know, you're just going to like let it float and then, you, you know, you're never going to be able to, to control anything. Versus something very, very simple and very clean that actually mimics the MetaTrader 4 layout. Um, this is something called Profit Shield Pro, right? And within this particular uh, you know, segment, um, this thing is not only um, going to put an automatic stop and a target um, on, the, on the asset, but it'll actually put a, a, a first target if the, if the price goes to, uh, takes the first profit, it will move the stop to break even and it will have a long target. So you have a short target and a long target. So let's just for argument's sake, I don't know. It is what it is. It's 100 points default over here. Let's buy this. You can see I bought um, you know, gold at 84.86. Actually, this is, I think, I forgot the, uh, um, let's reset this. I think the stops are, let me see. I'm gonna put a $10 stop underneath here. I take profit of $10 on the short side and at $20, I think this is correct on this. Yeah, you see 84, the stop loss is 74, the take profit is two, 2004, right? Um, so that's the 20 point target, the long target, the short target isn't displayed because the short target will automatically be taken out if um, if indeed you know I have that target. Um, so that's really, really simple, very cool but it can do a couple of other things. Um, if you wanted to change your stop and targets in MetaTrader, incredibly tedious. What if I wanted to put my stop now at 20 points? All I gotta do is just make it 20 and you'll see this thing changed to 1964. As a matter of fact, you know, it's, it's actually telling me that I changed stops, right? If I wanna close out the position, all I gotta hit the, is the close button, right? If I hit the reset button, I hit the reset button. So monstrously more simple, right? Monstrously more simple than, um, uh, than trying to trade MetaTrader. And imagine doing this 10, 12 times a day if you had to do that, that manually. You'd, you'd never survive more than two days of an evaluation um, doing it manually. Whereas with this, you can trade forever any instrument. This works on any instrument, any stop. You can also do it by price versus points. It's very, very flexible. It's a really, really cool, beautiful tool. Everybody in our service has access to this. And it's both MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5, in case you guys are wondering. Uh, so super, you know, super easy to um, to uh, to do. Okay. Um, the second tool that I want to show you that is a little bit more. Let me make sure I got the right one. Yeah, here it is. The second tool I want to show you that's a little bit more complex that we use in our room all the time. Um, let me just minimize this. Okay. Um, and this is something that's going to relate to the strategy that I'm going to show you. Um, as the, as the webinar progresses. But this is a more advanced version of this similar kind of a thing. We call this our bounce trader uh, dashboard. And again, here, I'm gonna use very, very small numbers, but I'm gonna show you what this thing does on like US 30 right now. It's very, very quiet. Markets are, are obviously quiet. So I can go market over here with a 30 stop, 30 target, right? I bought this. Just as, just as, as with the other one, I could adjust everything right away. I can put the stop now down to 10. Right? I can put the target to one if I wanted to, right? I could do a million different things. I just see how I adjusted everything, but that's just like the beginning of everything they can do. What if I decided, oh, you know what? I'm wrong in this position. I shouldn't be long. I want to reverse. I can hit the reverse button and it will actually go twice my size the other way, right? So now I went from a buy to a sell. What if I want to reverse the other way? Fine. What if I want to close it out? I can do all that. What if I want to go larger scale, larger size, right? All of it can be done. See, I can set my lots from one to two to four, just make it all, I mean, this is, this is our bread and butter. We literally use this 
all day long. As you can see, this was a trade we, we took in um, in uh, Nasdaq that still uh, that was in the, in the morning today off this thing. This is, by the way, hundred thousand dollar account that we're running to one hundred ten thousand, which is usually the target of, of prop accounts, and we're you know at about one hundred five after about two weeks of trading. And I'll show you the strategy we use to trade this. But basically, this is what you need. You need the tools, right? So we have the information flow, we have trading view, and we have the tools. Those are the things that is just the absolute um, bare bones minimum of what you would need in order to be able to, um, to trade properly, okay? Let me kind of just still go through the other screens, just see if there's any questions, because I you know, I've kind of ran through a lot of information. Um, uh, Okay, here to learn to make some decisions. Your screen is not clear to visualize. Okay, uh, no, the screen is clear, my friend. Um, okay, very good on this. Okay, let me see. Um, let me see if there's any questions in uh, in the room here from everything that I showed you. Um, okay, if you have any questions about the tools or anything else, feel free to, uh, to ask me later. But um, I'm gonna move on to the next point that I wanna kind of make, which is trading plan right you need forget the strategy you need you have the tools before you get gung-ho about strategy let's talk about having a trading plan because trading plan is incredibly important in how you're going to attack passing a prop test um there are three things i think you need to kind of understand about a trading plan and by the way you know in interviewing a lot of uh, i've interviewed a lot of traders who've passed a lot of these prop tests including many traders who passed the apex prop test um Almost nobody talks about making money. Little, no, as a matter of fact, everybody, every successful trader I've talked to never talks about making money. The only thing they talk about is what's their risk control. The only, the only focus on the downside, the upside literally takes care of itself if you have even a halfway decent um, strategy. So that's why when you talk about trading plan, it's really synonymous with what is my risk control plan. So you need to have risk assessment, you need to understand risk ratios, and most importantly, you need to understand risk size. Let me run you through some of these ideas. Um, let me go to slideshow mode here so you can see this much better. Okay, so first and foremost, um, most people are probably familiar with the basic risk ratios that everybody talks about um, on Wall Street and, and everywhere else in trading, um, but let's just understand the mechanics and the math behind each one of those ratios because it's really, I think, um, vital to understand exactly what you're up against when you do one or the other. So if you're trading $2 win for $1 risk, you know, $10 risk, $20 target, your break even is 33%. That means just one out of three times and you break even. You, you know, you win out of three times, you break even. That, by the way, sounds amazing, right? I mean, the, the nirvana of all trading um, in day trading is I trade 50% uh, accuracy on a two to one risk reward ratio, and I'm golden because I'm, it's, it's a money printing machine. Uh, if it was only so easy. Um, the hard truth of the markets is almost nobody gives you $2 for $1 worth of risk. Otherwise it'd be super easy for everybody to become um, rich. The markets are incredibly stingy. They never, never kind of give you a $2 run without taking out your $1 stop beforehand. You know. It's, it's rare that you have those situations. And that's the key thing, that those are good trades, but they're rare. So if you're trading frequently, you have zero chance of getting a 50%. And in fact, um, you know, my friend Tom Sosnov, who runs Tasty Trade, used to, he's a former um, CBOE market maker, he used to always say, most retail people always think that, that when they walk into the market, it's a 50-50 bet. What they don't understand is that the whole market full of professionals, uh, they're like poker players. They're there just to lie to you. They're there to fake the prices for you, not in any kind of illegal way, but in exactly how the markets are done. They run prices up, they run prices down, and it looks like it's things are going to explode when, in fact, they're going to get taken down. Those are all tricks that professionals do all the time to get you to commit your money and then take it away from you because that's how they make money. So um, the actual starting odds for almost anybody in retail is 25, 4, 75 against. And if you're trading two to one risk reward ratio on a 24, 25, 4, 75 against, and I, by the way, I invite you to try the, these strategies. You'll see that most of the times in trading two to one, 
you're only winning 25 percent of the time you're net you're you break you, you're net negative you are losing money that's the that's the truth of the market okay um one and a half to one is what a lot of what i would call quality swing traders pretty much centralize on which is um they need to you know be accurate only 40 percent of the time so that means if they're at 50 percent of the time at one and a half to one and one and a half to one is easier obviously to make than two to one that seems to be the sweet spot of a lot of swing traders right one to one in my opinion is the golden ratio if you're day trading um because you really can't do much more than that um some people you know yours included sometimes will trade with one and a half to one against but that already really, really raises the bar against you. You gotta be right two out of three times just to survive. And then when you go to one to two, or you know, 62.5% of the time just, just to survive. And then when you go to one to two, you gotta be right two out of three times. And that is a very, very, very hard, um, hard road to follow. You know, you literally have to be perfect every day. Nobody's perfect every day. The moment you kind of, you know, clip, you really uh, lose that risk parameters. So to me, I think if you're day trading, you should be looking at one to one as your best possible um, concept or best possible chance of making money in the market. So risk ratio, that's number one, you got to be aware of. Risk size. Now, risk size is something that I bet most people never even think about before they enter into the market. I'm actually curious if people in the room tell me and then I'll take a look at YouTube as well. How many trades do you do per day? Those of you who are trading, um, and you know, don't shade it. Be be honest with me, right? Type type it in the in the go to, and I'll and I'll tell you what people are typing. Um, how many trades per day do you guys usually do? Like, you know, be honest with me. Type it, in, it into the room, and let's see what people are are saying on uh, on YouTube as well. Let me see, let me get into my YouTube uh, comments. Um, how many how many trades per day do you guys do? One to two, okay. All right. What about you guys over here? How many trades do you guys do? I don't. Let me see what they're saying. Okay. Oh, there we go. I, now I see some people who are being honest. Okay. So some people are saying between one and three. Some people are saying one to two. Some people are saying four to five, which I think is you know minimum. And there are people who are saying ten to thirty typically. And there you go. There, there's my little degenerates. Uh, props to you. So if you're trading actively. And, and you know, it's like your weight. Everybody lies about your weight. Let's be honest. You'll be shocked. Go look. Go look at your, you know, trade record on on a day-to-day -day basis. Most of you're gonna find that you're trading at least five, ten times a day without even realizing. It. Without even realizing. It. You know, this is like it's like candy, right? Everybody loves to uh, to pick a spot and trade. If you're day trading, it's very likely you're gonna trade at least ten times a day. And therein lies the rub. This is the key thing that most people completely miss, which is um, a very, very simple formula and a really good one to use is if I'm going to target trying to make 1% per day and um, I trade 10 times per day, per trade, I need to be targeting only 10 basis points. I want to trade super small. 10 basis points is one tenth of 1%. So my target in terms of my money pile that I want to make on each particular trade is just one tenth of 1%. And there's a very good reason for that, because the basic rule of trading is the more times you trade, the less risk you must assume per trade, right? That's just simply a function of mathematics, human nature, and market craziness. I'll give you an example. Let's say you trade once a day. Um, what is your chance on that once a day that you're gonna hit some kind of a bad algo tick or some news of uh, war in the Middle East is gonna break out, or I don't know, some big player is gonna come in and sweep the ladder. And basically, you know, you're gonna be 20 points away from your stop uh, when, when, when the dust settles down. If you're trading once a day, it, it happens, but it's rare. Maybe it'll happen to you once a year, right? Um, if you're trading 10 times a day, it's almost a guarantee that it will happen to you once a week. If you're trading 20 to 30 times a day, 
it's almost a certainty it'll happen to you at least once a day. Um, and just, 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 you know, bad ticks, bad luck, bad stuff, not other stuff. You're putting yourself in front of danger every time. And so the more you trade, the smaller the piece of you that you want to put out there uh, in order to be able to protect the rest of you. Does that make sense to everybody? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So a very good formula is you say, I'm going to trade um, 20 times a day. Then, my, then, you know, let's just say, let's put it in dollars. Forget percentage because everybody gets always confused percentage. Um, I'm going to trade for $1,000 for $1, a day. Okay, let's, let's make it, you know, a little more interesting. I'm going to trade for $1,000 a day. I want to make $1,000 a day. I'm going to make 20 trades. That means I want to be targeting just $50 per trade. If I'm doing the same thing for $100, I literally want to make $5 per trade. That is how you stay alive. That is how you thrive. That is how you survive everything that the market throws at you. Uh, that's probably the most interesting thing as far as risk goes that I can show you today. So, is that clear to everybody? Everybody understand me? The more you trade, the less risk you need to take. And the good rule of thumb is divide whatever, you know, whatever target you have by the number of trades per day and make that your target um, as a reasonable trade. Okay? Cool. I think everybody got that. Now, now that we've thought um, a little bit about our trading plan, we kind of put our risk size all around, we understood risk ratios. Now we need to just simply understand, you know, what strategies can we trade? And the, and the truth of the matter is, there's only two strategies that anybody ever trades. There's continuation, which is known by its you know, formal name or, or known by its com more common name as trend, right? Trend is just basically, I'm buying at 105 because I think it goes to 106, right? Right? That's just trend, that's continuation. And then there is the opposite of that, which is called mean reversion, which is basically, Counter trend. That's the only two strategies that exist. Counter trend is based, mean reversion is basically I'm selling 105 because I think it drops back down to 100. Right? And every single strategy you've ever seen in the world from the most complicated, fastest algo strategy like Citadels and Virtus to the most leisurely macro strategy from Druckenmiller and George Soros and everything else, essentially. Are variations of this of these two themes, right? That's all there is. There's no other strategies. Everything either falls into trend or counter trend category. Now, if you're day trading or trading intraday, like like we do quite a lot, um, the key thing you have to understand is um, trend is driven by volume, right? The more people, the more volume comes. So the market is basically, you know, 100 up, 100 down, meaning, you know, I'm good for a 1,000 for shares, I'm good for 1,000 shares. A guy comes in for 100,000 shares, right? Does the price stay the same? No, the price rises, right? The guy wants to sell 100,000 shares, but does the price stay the same? No, the price falls. You know, same thing in the futures markets and the index markets. Um, size will move price. Size is just simply a, um, another synonym for liquidity. And what you want to do if you want to trade trend is trade during the highest probability of mass participation. When the most people are willing to bet the most dollars at the most at the specific particular time um, during the day into the marketplace. That's when you get directionality. It doesn't matter if it's up or down. What you're looking for is flow. You are looking for liquidity. Okay, that's trend. Now, the cousin of all of this, whether it's mean reversion or trend, is volatility. And that is kind of a, uh, that's, I think, really going to require a separate webinar to talk about, or perhaps a you know, conversation in my chat room. But I'll just simply say a very simple point. So, whether you have trend or mean reversion, success in trading those strategies very often doesn't necessarily depend on you calling direction. In other words, you could be right on direction, but if you're wrong on volatility, you are wrong on the trade. A very, very simple example of that is 
I'm long the US 30 at 35,000, right? Um, I think it goes to 36,000. But I put a stop at 100, you know, 35,900, 100 points down, right? I put a small, small stop because I don't um, have an appreciation for how volatile, for how much up and down movement uh, the asset has. So what happens? The asset drops to 900, stops me out, and then races to 36,000, right? Now, let's take the flip side example. And you say, oh, now I'm wiser. Now I'm really, really wiser because, because um, I'm going to give myself plenty of room to, you know, to let this happen. So now I buy 35,000 and I put a stop, like, I don't know, 700 points down, right? And I put a target at 35,700 up. So one to one, I'm just going to trade one to one, right? So then it comes down, comes down. I survive the stop. It rallies back up doesn't quite make it. It goes up to 35,500 and then drops like a stone and stops me out, right? So that's the secret sauce that we all constantly, and there is no perfect answer to this, right? There is no perfect answer to this. It's a matter of experience, knowledge, understanding. But that number, that number changes all the time. And that number is what even, my point being is that even if you're correct on the strategy, that number is what determines your success or failure. So just be, be kind of mindful of it. OK. Now, we talked about tools, talked about strategy. We talked about trading plan. Now let's talk about prop. Here are the key things that prop does that's a little different from what we are used to when we're trading our normal accounts. Prop has very, very strict and specific and distinct rules, and we need to understand them thoroughly before we kind of take the evaluation so that you're not tripped up by the rules. The first rule that prop firms have is a very, very tight drawdown, right? Generally, the way they, they structure most of the prop tests is it's 10% up, 5% down. You gotta make 10% uh, without losing 5%. You know, there's a lot of different variations on the theme um, and uh, uh, you know, we can talk about some of them as we go forward. I will say, for example, that our friends at Apex, um, who we absolutely love, actually have an incredibly fair formula where um, on a $50,000 account, I'll show you, I'll show you a, a, you know, a case study in just a second, but on a $50,000 account, they're only looking for a $3,000 up. So it's a 6% up against a $2,500 drawdown. So that's 6% up against the 5% drawdown. There's a reason why so many of my traders pass the, uh, the Apex challenge because it's incredibly fair towards the traders. It's not really as onerous as some of the other ones. But let's just, you know, go with that. Understand that there's these onerous conditions. Also, prop firms limit their leverage. So you can't really make it on one trade um, because uh, you're just not going to be able to kind of take one big trade and make the money that you want, right? But perhaps the most difficult and the most insidious aspect of their rules is something called the trailing threshold. I'm going to get through that in just one second. So, you know, we have a tight drawdown, we have limited leverage, sometimes 20 to 40 max is all they give you. Um, but here is the really, really um, difficult thing, the trailing threshold. And what that means is the following. You have a 5% drawdown, you start at 100,000, right? You're trading great, you're doing really, really well. And now, the, now you need to run the account to 110,000, right? And now you run the account up to 104. You think your stop is at 95. It's not. It moves up with your profits. It moves up with your profits, and now your stop is 99. So if you had a little bit of a pullback, it's a pullback to 99. You don't get any credit for all the profit you already made. It just moves up with you. So you need to really, really appreciate that fact. That's what makes it a lot more difficult than regular trading, where you have you know, you have good days, bad days, but that buffer, not yours. But that's not all. And this is perhaps, I think, the most important and interesting factor you need to understand most about most prop firms is that they have something called the trailing threshold. And what that is, is imagine you're in a trade, um, $100,000 account. You're in a trade for US 30, right? Um, and the trade is you buy it at 35000 right? Um, and it goes to 36,000. 
but you're kind of a trader that like likes to go for really, really big runs. You think maybe it's going to go to 37, 38. You're looking for really like a 3,000 point move in a Dow. You really, you know, you want to milk that trade, right? Um, it doesn't go your way. So it comes back out and it takes you out of break even. You're like, you know, no harm, no foul. It's a break even, right? Wrong. Because the way most prop firms calculate it is they're not calculating it from your current condition. They're saying, oh, you could have taken this profit at 36,000. The highest run up against you was at 36,000. So therefore, your stop level moves up another thousand behind you. So now instead of 99,000, you're behind, you're at 100,000 because you didn't, the fact that you didn't take the profit, that's not our problem. That was maximum profit on your, on your account, maximum equity. That's where your uh, stop goes. Now, all of you are going to go, oh, this is so unfair. Why would I want to do this? Blah, blah, blah. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's an easy, easy solution to this. But if you don't understand it, you're going to think, oh, my God, this is so unfair. Why do I, why do I even want to trade prop when they're playing these little games with me? They're not playing little, league, little games with you. What they're trying to do is they want to try to assess and make sure that you can control risk. They don't want to see a guy who, like, you know, has a bunch, uh, you know, has a hunch, takes a bunch, right? That's what we used to always say on Wall Street, have a, have a hunch, bet a bunch. Uh, they don't want to see a guy who swings for the fences because the guy who swings for the fences is a guy who's going to be a very, very big risk uh, parameter for them. So what they want a guy is a guy who can make consistent, steady, continuous profits. And the way to beat this thing, the way to completely ignore this issue is to basically have, this, this by the way, why you can't let profits run, right? Another one of those dictums that everybody says, oh, you got to let your profits run. Not if you're trading prop. If you let your profits run, you're going to get yourself into big, big trouble. So I'm going to share with you my plan, and then I'll show you my strategy of how we trade this for how to completely sidestep all of these issues. First and foremost, I think it's really important that we really focus on trading trend, although I'll show you an interesting counter trend idea within, within our trend, mostly trend based strategy. The reason why you want to trade trend is um, because it's easier. It, there are certain times in the marketplace where Trend really it becomes much more obvious in terms of liquidity. Remember what I said to you, trend is just liquidity. It's just when, it, when everybody's participating in the market, they're going to move prices in one direction or the other. That's all that is. And I want to be um, on that direction, up or down. I really don't care. I want to participate with everybody else into the run. I want to be part of the marathon because it's a lot easier to make money being part of the marathon than trying to be the one guy against the whole crowd coming at you. Sometimes that works, but a lot of times the crowd just runs over you, right? So counter trend trading. Um, a lot more difficult in many ways. I'm going to trade very, very tight. So, you know, I'm going to have very tight stops because I don't, I'm not going to have a big drawdown. My, my stops, as I said um, to you, are 10 basis points. So let's say I have a 5% drawdown, right? That's 500 basis points. My average stop is basically like 10 basis points. So I give myself 50 chances, 50 small chances to not blow out my whole drawdown cases, right? And I'm going to trade very small. Right. So I'm going to make small directional trades multiple times of the day. Now, the hidden advantage, the completely implied advantage of doing small targets is that this whole idea of letting profit run completely goes away. I am hitting maximum profit. Right. If I'm 20 points up, 30 points up and it's going 30 points up and I'm, and I'm and I get taken out. Um, there isn't much of, you know, it's not like it's a thousand points up and I, and I, and I had to, it, it went, it ran down against me and, and that whole thousand points just counts as my possible profit, right? I'm taking small profits that are effectively at the peak of that profit roll. So this whole threshold thing goes away completely. That's the key thing to making sure that your prop account completely follows the rules of almost all the prop traders, right? And, you know, my risk reward is just basically, as I said, 10 basis points of, uh, of notional, right? Each trade about one tenth to one percent. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to show you sort of a case study. We have Apex, their most popular account, fifty thousand dollar account, right? That everybody wants to trade. Um, you just need to make three thousand dollars on fifty thousand. That's really really small. It's just six percent, right? It's really really it's nothing, right? And let's we'll take the um, Nasdaq Mini. No, excuse me, Nasdaq Micro. This is the tiniest of Nasdaq futures. Now for a fifty thousand dollar account, you're allowed to trade. 10 minis or 100 micros, right? That's a lot of contracts. I'm just going to use one micro contract, one micro contract, teeny tiny bit, the smallest possible thing to trade, right? Now, NASDAQ 
is about a $15,000 um, notional instrument. So 10 basis point of that rounded up about 20 points. So I'm gonna make NASDAQ trades 20 up, 20 down, 20 target, 20 stop, 20 target, 20 stop. 20 points in NASDAQ is um, $40, right? It's $40, that's what it's worth. It's $2, $2 a, a point. So 20 points equals $40. I gotta make $3,000 divided by 40. That's just 75 trades and I'm funded. If I'm doing 10 trades a day, and let's say I'm just net positive, net positive four to five trades of those tiny, now remember, I'm choosing literally the smallest case scenario, like the absolute minimum amount of betting that I could possibly do. You could literally do 100 times the betting and still not break any of the rules. But let's just say I'm gonna do it with the smallest possible thing. What, how long is it gonna take me? If I'm doing a proper job and I have a reasonably good strategy, this won't take me more than a month. Now, you know, that's the key thing. Everybody um, wants to get funded in two days, and some people do. But if you look at the statistics that uh, fund, funding uh, prop firms reveal, all the people who basically get funded within one or two days, their ability to collect money, in other words, to actually collect money out of the, uh, a prop firm, is actually lower than. Um, uh, or their failure rate, at least put it this way, their failure rate is higher than the failure rate of people who are taking the prop test. So if like, you know, 95% of people fail on the prop test, 99% of people fail to collect money um, if they're following this kind of a have a hunch, but you better bunch thing. But if they're trading very small and they take that same mentality and approach into prop trading, they're gonna be able to collect money pretty much for as long as they live. Because when you're trading small, your risk is very, very small, and you're able to achieve slow and steady returns, which then convert themselves into actual payout money. So this is basically four net wins per day. That's all it is. Four net wins per day on the tiniest of trades, right? Really, really, really tiny. So why does this work for prop? It, because it's controlled drawdown, there's no threshold issues, and it's manageable targets, right? And the best reason of all, of course, is it's sustainable once funded, because the end result here is not just to pass the eval, but to be funded and go along. So that's the broad idea of what we do. Um, let me see if I have some questions, and then I'm gonna take you, I know you guys are dying to, to, to see my strategy. I'll share my strategy with you guys, be very, very happy to show it, and then you know I'll show you a couple of offers that, that, uh, that we have that hopefully you guys will like uh, from everybody um, in the room. Okay. Um, no, uh, somebody's saying to me, if, you, if it's one-to-one, -one, you need to win every trade. No, no, no. I make 10 trades. Let's say I win three. No, excuse me. I, I win seven. I lose three. That's net four. That's all it is. It's just net four. You're not winning every trade. As a matter of fact, you'll see that there are occasionally you're going to lose two or three trades in a row, but then you're going to win four or five trades in a row after that. I'll show you with my strategy. And that's where you get, it's the net, net number. That's all you need. It's just a net, net number. And you got it. Okay. Um, let me just switch my screens to find, because um, my, my YouTube comments are on the other screen. Okay, so here we go. So, um, any comments on this? 20 points is a lot. No, it's not, no, 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 20 points is nothing. Let me show you. So I think, I think it's much better if I show you the strategy so you guys could actually um, understand what we do. So I'm actually gonna show you, I'm not even gonna show you the 20 points. Um, first, I'm going to show you the futures version, then I'm going to show you the CFD version. So this is the S&P 500, right? Real life prices we're trading right now. Uh, right, this is actually uh, in replay mode right now because I want to show you what we do every day in uh, the DK room. This is trading views, but as I said to you, trading view is great. But if you really want to make it valuable, you create proprietary, interesting analytical indicators. And this is our bounce indicator. I've coded this myself. You know, um, there, there are programmers that code um, for trading, and those guys are very good at creating beautiful software. And they're dirty, down and dirty traders whose only interest is in creating, you know, this is not pretty, this may not look elegant, but it is very functional. It's the job here is for us to find winning trades. And let me show you how it finds winning trades, right? So 
This is our bounce indicator. It trades trend only. Um, let me see if I can, let me just start the replay mode here. Am I in replay mode? Let me see if this is going, yeah, it's going to go in replay mode. So I'm going to stop this over here just a little bit down the road just to show you what's going on in the chart. We subdivide the whole trading day into a football field, into a soccer field, into a football field, into a European football field, into an American football field. What I mean by this is this is the top, this is the bottom, this is the midfield, right? If you're in the upper end of it, you're pressing on Man United, you're trying to score a goal on them. You're, you, you're buying. You're in the upward trend. The trend is if you're above the midpoint, you're in the uptrend. If you're below the midpoint, you're in the downtrend. A very, very telling thing. Today, this is today's price action. So I'm going to go through today's price action with you. A very telling thing about today's price action is we literally never made it below the midpoint level. You'll see as the day progresses, we never, ever made it. That's how strong the trend was. So when you're in that kind of a day, does it make sense to be a buyer almost all the time? Of course it does, because you're not even coming down uh, into, a, into a sell category. So the way this works, and, and the, you know, um, every instrument, we have a little bit different, we, 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 we have the ability to completely configure our stops and targets um, and configure the, you know, the right approaches on each chart. So this is for um, the S&P 500, the ES, it's the tick size is, is a quarter quarter of a point, and we're trading four points up, four points down. Now, four points up, four points down is on a four thousand dollar instrument about one basis point. Right? Remember, I said to you we, we target one basis point in terms of amplitude, in terms of volatility, right? So that's one basis point. That's what we do. Um, so the way this thing works is when we have the proper buy conditions, we're going to get this little green triangle. Is going to show us the entry price, which is in this case is 42.95. It's going to show us the stop price, and you can see the stop and targets are always they don't always have to be. We could we can make them non-equal, but we like to make them equal as, as part of our thing. And just to show you that I can I can make this any way I want, I could make um I, you know I could make my stops I don't know 24 ticks, and then it'll be they'll be wider, and you'll see that it will adjust. You see it's minus six against plus four. That's not what I want to do, but I just want to tell you that. All of the stuff that we have is completely, completely user configurable. Like we can do whatever we want and create all sorts of interesting cell signals um, that, that are modifiable. Anyways, the point is, whenever we get a green tri uh, rec uh, triangle, we have the entry price for a long. It's showing us that there is all these conditions where against a green background, it's a green candle, we want to be taking this long. So winner, let me just kind of run you through the day today. I'm going to run you through the day. Winner. Um, Loser, this trade was 75. The stop was um, 98. It hit the hit the. You can actually literally see it. The thing, the beautiful thing about our stuff is that it's a very very visual, right? So you can you don't even have to you don't have to even follow the uh, um, uh, the trend, right? Same loser over here. You know, you're gonna get a couple of clips. Even even as I said to you, remember, even on a great. Um, although no no, no I think this is not a loser. It, it just looks very close, but it's actually it's 301.25 and the low over here was 302. This actually clears clears the stop. Remember I told you about the volatility clearing the stop. You need to have a wide enough but a tight enough target. You need that magical formula to kind of widen stop. So this is actually a winner. So you know, uh, winner winner winner. Let me just I'm just replaying the price action here for you, right? Um, and I'll just do a couple of them and, and I'm going to show you something very very interesting. Right, very, very interesting, right? That I want you guys to understand. So, what is this? This is the beginning of the day. This is the beginning of the day when everybody participates in the marketplace. This is when you find trend. And actually, the beginning of the day starts a little bit earlier. So let me just mark it properly. We like to the beginning of the day in the equity market starts at around seven o'clock in the morning. Not because Wall Street, you know, traders are uh, animals because it's a global market and Europeans are on the, are, are, um, London is on, is on board. And you can see they start pulling prices up pretty early. So you have a winner, 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 loser, winner. So now we're sort of, you know, we're talking about one, two, three, four, minus one, net three positive. And here's where it gets interesting. What happens here? What is, what is this timeline over here on the stock market? This is basically lunch. It's lunch in America and it's the end of the day in Europe, right? It's when everybody kind of goes off and stops doing business. And it's at this time that we absolutely do not want to be trading trend. This is the death valley of trend trading. So we almost never put trades on after 11 o'clock 
in a trend-like fashion. Now, remember I said to you there's only two trades to make, um, trend or counter trend, right? So if it ain't working one way, it actually can be very profitable the other way. Now, this is an advanced technique. I'm not recommending you guys do this. We do this, you know, um, on an advanced basis for some of the some of the guys in my room. If we, you know, if we want to trade counter trend, we absolutely love this Death Valley time of 11 to 12 because what we're going to do is we're actually going to reverse our signals. And when instead of the buy signal over here, we're signaling us a buy, right? If it ain't going to work, if it's broke, that means it's going to work the other way. We're going to be sellers and sellers here, sellers here. <laughs> excuse me sell this here i spent all lunch today selling the stock market against sorry let me just drink sorry selling the stock market against a 500 point rally making money on every one of my sales because i knew when to sell and then around you know 1 30 in the uh, in, in the afternoon 1 to 1 30 in the afternoon boom trend resumes right everybody comes back we're ready to party and we start buying 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 and all of these trades become winner, 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 chicken dinner. And that's all we need. It's a very, very simple, very clean strategy that combine, that looks at price action, looks at flow, looks at candlesticks, and just takes them like a pigeon. Boop, 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 boop. Takes little bites out of the market, and pretty soon, you got a nice, big, fat profit for the day. Like today, I sort of calculated back of the envelope. There was probably, I think, if you think about this, this is the S and P on the uh, and by the way the same kind of a thing on US 30 right you can you can really see this on the US 30 I'll show this to you in the replay mode here um, you know I actually on the US 30 I'd actually marked all the uh, all the ticks and I believe there was literally net net when when I took off the the losers against the winners in trend based mode only um, and I think I even ran this through the uh, yeah I even ran this through lunch I was like. I'm going to trade trend through lunch just to see how bad it is. And when all is said and done, it was 11 net positive at 30 points each in the, in the, um, uh, in the Dow. So let's just sort of say I'm trading for, you know, 10 basis point, uh, 10 basis points of trade, 30 times 10, that's 3%. I got to make, you know, eight, 9% on my thing and within one day today on a net net basis, I was able to make 3%. If I took all the trend trades, I, I didn't take all the trend trades because I was busy. But the point is, it doesn't have to be complicated to be very successful, right? That's the key to really, really beating the props and becoming sustainable. So if you guys are interested, uh, the best guys in the world, we absolutely love these guys, um, Apex Trading. They have literally paid it. They make it so fair for for traders. You know, six percent up, five percent down. It's just the best deal ever. And it's I don't I, I don't even want to tell you how cheap it is because it's an embarrassment. I think at a ninety percent discount, um, it's literally thirty dollars to buy in. I mean, it's it's an embarrassment at how cheap they are at this point. If I you know if there's ever if you're ever going to try an eval, I mean, this is like literally um, no. It's 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 a bad diner dinner in new york city um and you know you could get a fifty thousand dollar account for that you know for, for that price and give it a shot so we'll send you the link um i'll happy to post this right now in both rooms if you want to get the discount it's going to end very soon their whole they, they run these crazy crazy discount programs so i want you to um take advantage of them so i'm actually going to put this i put this into um the youtube channel and then let me see if i can put this into my go-to channel but don't worry if you guys signed up i'm obviously going to um uh we'll obviously send you the, uh, the replay so we'll send this to you uh, by replay as well but here i'm going to send you the link here so sent to all okay uh so make sure it's a great a great deal really really nice company great guys um highly recommend so that's apex and then if you're interested in hanging out with us BK Trader, right? BK Forex, you can get a hold of everything we do, not just the kind of day trading that I do during the day, but the fundamental Forex trading that Kathy does every single day, right? Again, for a very big discount. But regularly, we're like 197. I'm going to send you this link. You can sign up for 145. All those tools I showed you, those big execution tools where you could just go bop, 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 and it will automatically set the stops and targets. Those are all going to be at your disposal. You're going to be able to play with them. You can play with them on demos. You can play with them on small accounts, and then you can play with them on large accounts. And they will work, um, you know, up and down. MT5, MT4, 
whatever you want, they'll work on those tools. Um, so let me send that to everybody as a link to um, sign up because I think we know we're only going to do the same thing as Apex, just a couple of days of, this, of these discounts. Um, but I'd love to have you in my room. So now I'm going to just uh, look at what everybody has as a question mark and see what you guys have. Um, so how does this bounce work with regards to incoming news? We stand down for the news, Andrew. As I said to you, remember, we look, we look at financial juice. We, we know exactly when the releases are. So, for example, not farm payrolls tomorrow. Um, by about 7.45, I'll not, I will not have any positions in the marketplace. I'll be standing down. I'll wait till the news comes out. We usually wait for five minutes because the news always, you know, fakes the market one up the other way. Um, and generally, non farm payrolls, the best time to trade it is like an hour afterwards when everybody in the stock market comes in and begins to kind of really assess whether this is good or bad it starts to create directionality right um that's the word i like to use directionality because i don't have a view on direction what i just really want is directionality i want that sustained move one way or the other that i can just clip out all my little profits from in a very very methodical manner that's how we make our money um Apex is Ninja Trader and Rhythmic both. And uh, it also has Trader of Eight, which has a uh, trading view on it. So you could literally put the trading view indicator, the BK trading view indicator, and trade futures directly from Apex, which is very, very cool. Um, let me see if there's any other questions. Can we automate the trades in Apex? No, you can't. Um, uh, the trades in Apex, uh, you know, you, they want you, they, they want a, they want you to be making human decisions because they're obviously going to be entrusting you with money. So they want to make sure that, you know, that's not a robot that's just going to go haywire. Um, uh, Apex uses Ninja tools. Does, does my tools work there? It's an interesting question there. So not quite, but very soon. Um, because all of this trading view code, we're going to be able to port. In other words, the kind of charts that I showed you with those, you know, signals showing you on the charts, like entry here, you know, buy here, target here. We're going to be able, I think, to replicate almost all that functionality with a Ninja Trader. And of course, you know, if you're part of our community, you're going to be able to have access to that. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Um, okay. Let me see if there's anything else. Now, let me see if there's anything on YouTube. Sorry, guys, I have to keep switch. Oops, I lost my my screen. Um, oh, what's going on over here? Oh, I don't know why it's doing this. Oh, I think I need to go to full screen. Let me see a slideshow. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, okay. I just want to see if there's any, if there's any comments on, on YouTube for me. Um, points for the ES is four up, four down, Aaron. Uh, four up, four down for what I do. Now, you know, you can do more. The beautiful thing, as I said, everything in, in, in our software is completely configurable. You, you know, you don't want to trade the one minute chart. You want to trade the five minute chart. You want to try to go for 10, 10, be my guest. You know, you want to, you want to trade the one hour chart and maybe make one trade a day. Um, it's all, you know, it's all completely configurable to the volatility signature, to the, uh, you know, time frame, everything else. I just showed you what we do. With the with you know what we, we call ourselves degenerate traders because we like to trade a lot. So if you want to day trade a lot, that's what we do. But you can take the same model and do one tenth, you know, do one tenth and do the same thing. What are the hours of um, trading? Um, we trade live 9:30 in the morning till 10:30 in the morning every day. But you know, frankly, I'm trading like somewhere between 6 a.m. till about 11 a.m. every day. You know. Um, internally and all of my trades you saw what you saw like you saw how like those little pop-ups came up in, the, in our discord when I was trading because that my account is tied to our discord channel so you can actually see my trades popping up um, even at, you know even at off hours even when we're not trading live so it's really, really kind of easy to understand the goal here is not for you the real real goal is for me to help you trade yourself to understand the strategy and make it your own and I got to tell you that almost everybody in my room trades better than I do, um, you know, in in sense that they take these strategies and just kill it with them because they modify to their own, you know, to their own profile structure, to their own volatility structure, to their own size structure, whatever, you know, I'm like busy doing a million different things during the day. So um, I try to just focus on one or two hours a day, but we've had multiple people 
you know, a room who, you know, passed the apex challenges with, with this approach. And are really, really happy. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm super happy for that, of course, because that's, that's our goal. Um, can you buy sell alerts on bounce? Can buy sell alerts can be can used to trigger trades in MT4? So very, 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 I think you're going to be in my, in my um, Gladiator course. If you're in my mentorship course, which is kind of a very advanced structure, um, the answer to that is yes, but that's not a, you know, that's not a, that's not a rookie thing to do. So, yeah, but I got to tell you, here's the thing that I, I, I want to caution you against. Robots are amazing. And they're great to automate a lot of, I think, longer term trades. But if you're going to do with a server, what is essentially a high frequency robot, um, you know, you walk in a very fine line. You're going to know when to turn it off. I mean, the key thing with a robot, if you, as long as you're cool knowing when to turn it off, it should be a very productive thing. That's why we never trade a ro even all the MT5, MT4 stuff that we have that can automate it. I never trade it full time. It's got to, the market is not a monolith. You got to know you know, when it's feeling good and when it's feeling bad. It's like a relationship, you know. You can't be, uh, you know, you can't be asking it from your wife all the time. Um, anyways, what's the best uh, Forex pair for bounce? Um, great question, dollar yen. Dollar yen by far, like just the monster, you know, the monster that is dollar yen, great trade. You know, you can, you can catch a lot of really good moves. Obviously there you, you, you'd have to, adjust i would say the volatility in dollar yen 10 10 we started with but it probably at this point is going to be 50 50 because it's, it's such excuse me 20 20 because it's, it's such a wide volatility trade but those are good you know um it's actually a great question um we'll take a look at it in my room um and we'll see i know for example it works awesome on gold i you know i started trading on gold i just like the key thing is um you need to focus you know you have to, you, the, the way to make this successful is find one or two things you really like to trade and then use it to trade that. You know, um, I love to trade equities, so I just focus on US 30, the S and P, Nasdaq. You know, um, I don't want to diffuse my attention span. You know, that's it. Um, you could trade G GBP, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, you know, that's it. So that's what we got to show you. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. As I said, we're gonna we're gonna um, archive everything, send you a video. Please, please uh, do not waste the opportunity. We get 90% off with Apex. Go get those guys. Um, you know, even if you don't use it, like a lot of a lot of people actually buy this and just sit on it because you know, like it's so cheap. You don't have to start away trading right away. You could, you know, trade in a week or two. But a lot of people I know buy like 10 of these at a time, and then they can experiment. You know, I want to trade S&P on one. I want to trade Nasdaq on the other. I want to trade different strategies on this. I want to trade Kathy strategies on this. You can do like a million different things because it's so cheap that you know it's, it's like it's like like all you can eat buffet. You're gonna get a lot more food than you're actually gonna eat, but you're gonna get a lot of different tastes. So I really recommend guys go to Apex, go take care of them, and then come to me, and I'll be happy to show you how I trade um, in our room. And and you know, obviously with my trading, you get Kathy's trading, which is really really. Uh, it's exciting and interesting fundamentally based trade, forex trading that she does every single day where she's been really killing it like she targets 100 pips a, a week and i believe in the month of october she's like 450 500 pips you know to the good like literally every single week she's been na nailing it to her target so um been very very productive uh, and i hope you guys really all enjoyed it um no more questions, right? I think we're good. Let me see if there's any the one final questions on the go-to. Sorry, I'm flipping around from the two screens here because I have these big computers. Um, now it looks like no, everybody is good. Bonsoir, bonsoir, Charles. Um, I thank you so much, guys. I can't believe you guys are up in Paris. Oh my God, it's so late in Paris right now. Um, thank you so much for coming. Really, really enjoyed it. This was really, really a lot of fun. Um, and we'll do it again, of course, anytime. But in the meantime, please take take advantage of our offers. They're, they're going to be really, really great. I'll see everybody in the markets, guys. I'll see everybody in the NFPs. If you want to join me tonight, you can live trade with me tomorrow. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.